Are you sick of dipping and ruining your weld passes? Sick of wrecking cups and torch hardware? Stick with me. I'm going to give you some tips to help out with this problem. My name is Dusty and I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. On my YouTube channel, it is my mission to teach and show off the possibilities of TIG welding. And I want to show it to all the positive people in the welding industry who love TIG welding as much as I do. So join me for my mission on my channel and let's get welding. This is Pacific Arc TIG Welding. All right, our kids, welcome to another episode. So I wanna know, have you ever been running a weld pass and had your vibe completely ruined by smashing your tungsten into the weld pool and contaminating everything? Or fighting for comfort or seeing properly with a tricky angle and literally fed the TIG rod into the TIG cup? Well, first off, let me start by saying this. If anyone clicked on this video thinking that they were gonna see me saying I never do this, you're wrong. I, as well as everybody, have days where I literally cannot keep my torch out of the weld pool. I destroy many tungstens, just like everybody else out there trying to learn. It happens. Who out there has problems with this? Some days you can go totally fine with zero dipping at all, and other days, for whatever reason, you can't keep yourself from doing it. Don't feel bad, you're not alone. Even people like myself who've been doing the trade for years and years and years. It's something we always just have to deal with. But the question I want to ask you is, why do you think it happens? Now before you go on and watch the rest of this video, let me know in the comments below right now, why do you think it happens? Is there a reason that it happens to you? Is there something you're always doing that you know you shouldn't do? Let me know below before you move on to watching the rest of this episode. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you the reason why it happens to me. Maybe you can relate to this. Ready for this? Because I'm being lazy. That's right. Or whether it's not being comfortable before I start, or thinking I can just send it and get things done without preparing properly. Whatever it is, it always comes back to lack of preparedness. When I'm teaching people how to TIG weld, whether in person or in my online training program, whenever people dip, we have to take a look at what happened before they dipped. And there's something I always see pretty much every time this happens. And this thing can always be called discomfort. Let me explain a little bit. Anytime somebody has dipped, it has usually come from one of two things. Having your hands uncomfortable or shaky or not having proper vision. Now, I'm actually gonna simplify this even more for you. I'm gonna go so far as to say the second thing I mentioned is usually caused by the first thing. So you could argue, maybe it's just one thing. But anyway, let's go over some stuff. I'll get you some tips to help you out. So I've talked about this on my channel before. This here is an episode where I talk about something specifically that I teach all of my students. And this detail is called restrictive hand posture. Go back and check out this episode if you haven't seen it already. Or even if you have seen it, go check it out again because there is a lot of stuff in this episode that is absolutely gonna help you out a ton. I go over some of the most important stuff as far as having a comfortable torch hand and ways that we can prepare for the pass that we're about to do. One of the main problems I usually see is people position their hand in a way where they won't have adequate travel. What is most common is this. Do you see how I have my wrist anchored to the table and as I try and move, I only have about two inches or so of comfortable hand travel. So when I go to do a weld like this, I will only be working with a very limited amount of comfortable travel. So when you add in the factors of dealing with filler rod and navigating your way, perhaps through some tricky joint configurations, dipping is a very big possibility. Watch what I do here. Now instead, I have the table making contact with the middle of my forearm. What I've just done is increase my travel comfort by approximately another three to four inches. By being comfortable and having the ability to maintain that comfort for a longer distance, I've just reduced the chances of me dipping considerably. So it pays off big time to pay attention to our comfort. So this leads me to the second thing I mentioned, which is not being able to see clearly. If your hand is uncomfortable, we are gonna be moving in a position that will eventually cause us to lose the quality of our line of sight. We may not have something physically obstructing our view completely, but basically what will happen is your vision or your line of sight will not be the same as it was when we began the pass. The idea is to maintain proper and consistent vision for the same amount of time we have comfortable hands. We know our hand travel is gonna be comfortable for a certain amount of welding. We need to make sure we do the same with our vision. So when I'm teaching someone online and I'm seeing that they're having problems with dipping, what I usually do is this. I ask them to send me a photo or a video from an angle from where you are watching me right now so I can get a look at what they're doing with their body posture while they're welding. Now. Usually, when I get this photo or video back, it's gonna look something like this. <laughs> look at this. Does this look comfortable? Sure, I'm in super close and I can probably see the start of the pass really well, but as I begin to move and I need to adapt to my travel path, 
how the hell am I gonna maintain comfort with my hands and my vision as well? No way, it's not gonna happen. Now what I wanna see is this. See how my arm is locked to the table where it should be, and my vision is lined up with the travel path as well. So as I approach the end of a pass, the theory is you can see just as clearly at the end of the pass as you could see at the start. Take a look at my body posture overall. Am I hunched over the table all crunched up like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons? Or am I positioned stable, sturdy, ready to crush some dope welds and do it like I own the place? Again, the importance of the tips that I mentioned in this episode are crucial to getting a grasp on the fundamentals that make a good weld. As well, in the same episode I just mentioned, there is a few other really important things that I mentioned in there as well. So be sure, jump over to that episode, get caught up if you missed that one already, or jump back and just brush up on those details. It'll help you out, I promise. So again, I ask, what is your hand posture and your vision like when you set up for a pass? Working with people by distance in my online program, everybody has different obstacles they have to overcome when they're welding. As far as comfort, as far as setup, as far as one table leg being shorter than the others and they gotta lean on it a certain way to keep it from wobbling around, whatever, all kinds of stuff. Let me know in the comments below what trips you up. If I see somebody commenting some stuff that I think I can help you out with, I'll jump in here and I'll crack off an episode real quick for you. Go out today and do a random act of kindness. Do something, spread some positivity in the world, we need it. So as I mentioned before, go check this episode out. Watch it if you haven't seen it already. Check the description below. Check out the links to the gear I use. For Pacific Arc TIG welding, my name is Dusty. Fill and chill, talk to you soon. Peace.